welcome to the ADP Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. Steve. Yes. You've been away, not that people know. would know because we recorded extra air, but it just doesn't <laughs> feel like it's the same without you being around here, mate. I know, I know. Everyone so don't go me. away again. Don't right. cleave me. I, I, I love, you know, it, 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 you miss out on what's going on in the office here. Well, you miss what's going on around in the world. Exactly. I mean, there's all sorts of craziness that I don't even think we can talk about. I'm not going to talk about it. We, we talked we, about off camera. The first, the first rule is if we talk about it, we go off air because <laughs> I don't know what we can and what we can't say. I mean, I see other people talking about it. I'd love to, but... Two hours later. Um, anyway, Steve? Yes. <laughs> well, let's get on to something a little bit more funny. Hopefully people are tuning in to learn about their health and yep. their wellness. Yeah. But it's funny because I had a friend, uh, American friend the other day, sort of asked some questions and going, you know, the Australian um, vernacular oh, yeah. language, you guys have got some really strange, um, you know, quirks. And he loved it when we spoke about Bush pigs, like you know, and, and, and typically what is an Australian? And look, the funny thing is, this is like Australian eighties sort of language, right? It is, so it is. you know, so Steve, I said, look at that bush pig. You're not going to ask me what a bush pig. We're is. not out there shooting with the three hundred three killing, killing razorbacks, that, right? That, that run around in the bush. No, no they, they no. mean something very different. Very, right? That's a very de- derogatory statement that I would never use Ever. towards an unattractive female. Yeah, yeah, usually an overweight, unattractive female is what they are. Uh, yes. Well, yeah, maybe. You know, and I'm not sure any of those three things even exist anymore, Steve, in, in 2022. <laughs> so yeah, you just have to go with it. But the other word that, and, and we've mentioned it, but the, the, the word of the week, oh, the, no. the Aussie slang word of the week yep. is, is goonbag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just got to love it, right? Another like, one that we goon, can't say bag. So, Steve, do you know what a goon bag is? Well, I believe it's the inner lining of a wine box. It is. Is that yeah, right? The silver, the silver yeah, yeah. Uh, thing. It's funny because I remember one time when I was very young, I went over to a mate's place. Yeah. Cheap. Yep. Cooler bar wines. Of, That's you it. That? Yeah. And um, I don't know if they invented the goon bag or not, but effectively it is a a like a foil balloon yeah. that you fill up with wine yeah. and you sort of have that little, um, little tab, thing. tab that you sort of open up and you can just we, scull yeah, it. Yeah, we, we used to grab the bag yeah. and, you know, this many years ago for mothers listening, uh, and then just you, you squeeze the That's bag it. and lift up at the same time and it would force wine into yeah, your body. Yeah, it's crazy. Because I, I hated the taste of it. Yeah. But you wanted to get drunk. Mm. So um, that's what we did. That, yeah. that's, well, that was a bad well, behaviour. One time, and this is when I was young and stupid, grade yeah. nine, yeah. Um, went over to my mate's place, Craig, and we're like, because both of us were tall. He was really tall. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, grade nine, he, he was like six foot tall in right. grade nine. And uh, back then they didn't give a damn, no, by the way. So they didn't. we rocked in and he, <clears throat> he yeah. sort of walks up, um, I'll have uh, this and, you know, trying yeah. to put on a deep voice. And yeah. so, you know, we went out. And anyway, he, he got a – he got a um, a, 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 goon cool, bag? a cooler bar cask, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah the, with the goon bag inside. Yeah. Anyway, so we we made plans. His mum found it, and um, and she she took out the goon bag, had it for herself, and she filled it with potatoes. Oh, and so he's like, cool. So we got funny. it. We came over, and he's opened it up, and he's like, yeah, we've been sprung, sprung. So there was no goon band drinking. Damn, yeah, it is. I got drunk on Cinzano when I was younger. That was terrible. No, don't. That was not, really yeah. bad vomiting and. Hmm. That was the worst, worst I've ever done. But. Well, let's go from bad things that you should not be doing to yeah. good things. Good Steve things, I. absolutely. So, gut health. Yeah. Now, it's funny, you know, it's it's one of those things, obviously, that we've been passionate about for a long time. Yep. And again, we say that. And, and, and the gut is fascinating and we're learning more and more about it. But, Steve, you've had a lot of questions come in from, from viewers and listeners and, and, and from our, 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 our customers yeah. wanting to know some, some questions around the gut. And some of them are quite bizarre. They're bizarre so, is an understatement. So we thought that we, we would go through and yeah. read out some of these questions. Um, and then you can, because I think a lot of people are going to want to hear some of this. I mean, yeah. some of it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, some of it's a little unusual, yeah. but I think a lot of people can oh, can benefit from, yeah. from, from some of these. Yeah, so. there, there, there's some really weird questions there and, and some that have longer answers, and I think what 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 the, the people are asking. So you want to want to go through from the top there because I, I think I remember the first one. It was amazing. Yeah, uh, um, one of the things you said is uh, if we can mention the polyphenols and the specific types and other herbs um, uh, that that are in use. Yep. <laughs> um, and, uh, and and, and you, 
we, we want to bring more education to this area because yeah. some polyphenols are more effective than others. Ah. And, you know, and again, a broad spectrum is probably the best way to go, right? You're taking different things to hit different different ingredients. But um, at the end of the day, um, they do have different impact, but sure. you may or may not need them. But the best thing to do is sort of just have a bit of everything. Right? It is. And we've talked about it before, but but eating, eating the rainbow sort of thing where we've got different colours. Yeah. Because colours represent different polyphenols. Yep. So, so if, if you're having a lot of coloured foods, like, you know, you've, you've got your red capsicums, you've got your yellow capsicums, you've got, you know, green vegetables, you've got peppers all Peppers for our American friends. Oh, peppers, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, they call them peppers. peppers, yep. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, so anything that's, got, uh, that's plant-based, it's full of colour. Mm. So obviously not artificial colours. No. But, but natural colours are absolutely beautiful for the body because they're, they're rich in polyphenols. So there was a, a mummy. A 5,300-year-old yeah. mummy that was found, <laughs> which is funny because, as I said, I'm sort of the Can we say mummy anymore is it a, or is it a parent? It's a nondescript ancient being wrapped in, in toilet paper. No, I don't know. But, like, yes, no, we can say a mummy. Oh, okay, good. Mummy. Do you know why they're – I don't even know. Why are they called birthing mu- parent. Oh, why are they called <laughs> – Why were they called mummies? And for our Americans, they're not mummies. And they do call mummies mummies, not mummies. Yeah, which is funny. Right. It but, is. but yeah, they're a mummy. But um, yep. yeah, so it was found with a perverse, uh, preserved stomach content, which they analysed. Yes. So, Steve, that's interesting. It's fascinating. So, and, and, and the question that came out from that is that should we eat like they did back then? I mean, the funny thing is, is that you almost think that sometimes what they did back then was the way to, to live and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, maybe not. But, not always. But, but in terms of... What did we find out about this mummy's preserved stomach? All right. Well, well he, 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 I'll say he. I don't know if it was a he or a good female. Um, but but they had a, um, a stomach content that was analysed using, like, DNA and that sort of thing. And they found um, DNA in there. And it was DNA of elk and deer. Elk and deer. Yeah. So these mummies were not vegetarians. They were, they, no, definitely. Had a very high fat diet. Yeah. Uh, it was in, it was in the, uh, like, it was in the cold area. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was predominantly animal food is what was found in the gut content, okay. as well as some ancient sort of older grains that were eaten back then, mm. about 5,000 years ago, and other plant materials that they couldn't identify. But basically they got the DNA and it was, was elk and deer and it was a very high-fat diet. So 5,300 years ago, yep. coming from what area? I mean, it was mummified. Yeah, so, so therefore, it was, it was in Asia, basically. It was in Asia, okay. Yeah. Um, but that's not... Prehistoric, isn't it? No. What's, the, what's the historic age? Do you know? Do we well, know? Well, it depends on which era you want to go. And like, like the most famous area, uh, uh, like um, the um, that, that that was during what they call the Copper Age. Copper Age, if, right? If you want to know ages, yeah. But prehistoric is is really before man. So right. you know, pe- people might know of the Jurassic period, mm. which was about sixty five million years ago. Yeah. So there's all that sort of stuff. But but this is mankind has been you know about three million years. On the Earth, that was a that that was a Homo erectus. So that was one of us. Um, right. Yep. Yeah, um, so it was just a it was just a hominid. So it wasn't wasn't anything like a, an old um, Australopithecus, which is a right. really old, okay. you know, ape like man sort of. Thing. So I think in terms of the um, the preserved stomach content, um, yeah. they were eating. So did they find anything else as far as plant material? Was they there couldn't anything know, like the that? The plant DNA had, had broken down a bit. Right. There was some ancient grain in there that they found that oh, really? a small amount. Right. Um, so, but do I'm they really, know what it was? Oh, yeah. They, I can't remember what it was. It was like a, an like old a- amaranth or something. Yeah, like it was that. some o- older grain that that's not very well consumed. These it wasn't like wheat or anything. Right. Um, but but basically had very high fat content in that's the stomach. Interesting. And because you got to remember that they and and the the paper actually that that, that reviewed this when they when they found it said that these people obviously realised that a higher fat diet was beneficial for people in the cold. Yeah. So they they had the link between. Calories, maybe, mm. and you know, preservation of life. Because back then, you starved to death. You didn't die of obesity. Well, for, uh, today, I mean, yeah. and uh, you know, are you allowed to call Eskimos Eskimos? They're not allowed to call the es- Eskimos Eskimos anymore. Don't what know. do you What do you need to call Matt? What do you call Eskimos? We should know that. What do we What do we call them? Because oh. because they eat typically like a lot of blubber, right? Like that they, 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 they have do, to, and they burn it for energy. They do. But I mean, you've got to think in, in an igloo. Yeah. Um, you're looking outside. There's not too much. Um, you know, plant material. No, no, and this is where uh, man is very, very um, adaptable. adaptable. Mm. Really adaptable. Like, mm. like, what's the best diet is a very tricky answer mm. because if you're Inuit, Inuit, Inuit. Okay, Inuit. I'm into Inuit. I'm yeah, into the correct. Inuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. so sorry. So, any Eskimos listening? I mean, sorry, Inuits listening. <laughs> I didn't mean to say Eskimo. So, right. don't ban us. So, Inuits. Yeah. 
can eat um, like predominantly animal food because they have to. Yeah. If, if you're thinking you're living in an area, there's no fields of corn or no. grains or yeah. plants of any description, mm. especially during winter time, yeah. they, they would have to struggle because everything's frozen ice. But you could certainly eat uh, an animal. Now, you've got to remember an animal. Uh, like, like what, are the know, ve- what do the vegan Inuits do? <laughs> die. <laughs> right. okay. they, they just die. They starve to death right. because um, they just don't exist. Because they, if there were any that were around that uh, thought, oh, I don't want to eat this meat stuff, they would simply starve to death. Okay. Because in that area, of course, you you are completely void of plant foods. Mm. And and people know about vitamin C, don't they? They sure. know it's in fresh foods and remember scurvy when yeah. they didn't eat fresh foods. Well, back then, they you can get vitamin C from a liver. An I organ was going to say, yeah, it would be organs, right? Yeah, absolutely. Most because of, a lot of animals can produce vitamin C and they produce all, it. All. Where, Steve? Well, I'm producing the liver. There you go. They, so you eat the liver, you yeah. get the vitamin C. Absolutely. Every, every, Which always fascinated me younger because, I mean, obviously we heard about the limeys, like the, yeah. the scurvy from, yep. the, from the guys on the boats and that sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And they worked out, oh, okay, just eat lime. But then for Inuits and, and other people in remote areas where yeah. they don't eat a lot of plant material. That's right. You eat the offal. Eat the offal. And, and you got to remember, offal's almost- not awful. That's exactly right. Most animals produce, make their own vitamin C. We um, and monkeys and guinea pigs, there's, there's only a few that can't make vitamin C. Mm. Mm. So vitamin C is not a vitamin for uh, most animals because mm. they make it like my cat and your dog. They make their own vitamin C. They don't need to consume fresh food every day. Um, so, but, but let's say you're a lineman and you're on a, a boat. And you're in the, you know, you're trying to discover Australia back in 1770. Mm. What um, was that like, Steve? Sorry? What was that like? Oh, yeah, it was, it was you know, a bit tough those days. Yeah. But but if they'd actually caught birds, you know, that landed on the, the boat, eat the liver, they wouldn't have got scurvy. There you go. Yeah. Or ate liver from a, a fish right. that they caught. But you got to remember back then it was, the, you know, 1700s and they, they, didn't, they know. didn't know anything no. about this sort of stuff. So um, very interesting. But but then you, you look at the Inuits and, and they eat a lot of um, – animal food predominantly, then you go to sort of an Amazonian or a, a place where there's a lot more vegetarianism by, you know, unless they can catch the animal, they are vegetarians. Right. And it's not the easiest thing to do is to catch living things a lot of the time. Yeah. So well, they would- Carrot's pretty easy. Yeah, exactly. It's like, ha ha, you know. Got them, man. Uh, you can certainly <laughs> gotcha. crop, you can crop your own food or you yeah. can, you can, you know, eat, eat bananas or coconuts mm. or whatever. They, they're, they're pretty, um, you know, common and easy to get. Mm. So there are groups of people on the earth that have a largely vegetarian diet and do fine on that too. Mm. So we, we now know the longest lived people is not the Japanese anymore. It's actually the Moroccans. Really? Um, yeah. And they, 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 is that a blue zone now? Yeah, well, yeah. It's a new it blue is. zone. Well, how old do they live? Do you know? Uh, Eighty nine is the average. Eighty nine. That's Japan's pretty Japan's eighty five. So they, they is actually, that because Japan has become more westernized in its diet? Yes, but but also the Japanese are now still living about the same length. But the Moroccans have socialized medicine. They they have a what lot of. What does that mean? Oh, that that means they've got easy access to medicine. So they they call it socialized, and like we've got. Australia has got semi-socialised medicine. It's right. not totally socialised because, um, you know, we still have to pay a certain amount for drugs. Let's say you want, you're, you're, you're a severe diabetic and you're on this very expensive drug. The most it'll cost is about $50 a month mm. for a prescription because it's subsidised. Okay. Now, if you're in uh, another country and you needed that drug, you simply can't afford it, you die. Right. You know, so, or, you know, get very sick or something like that. So, so the, the, that Moroccans have a very, uh, a very, very affluent. So they also eat a, a largely a Mediterranean diet. So it's not all down to diet, but it's also they have very low stress and they have very, have very high family bonds. Like Westerners have poor family bonding. So in other words, when you age you often shift up to an old age home, which is not good for longevity. Better than the Inuits. Do you know what happens to the Inuits? <laughs> what are when they, they lose their teeth, they sh- ship them off into the tundra and polar oh, bears eat them. Jeez. Okay. Mm. Didn't know that. I hope we're yeah. not going to offend anyone by saying that, are we? No. No, okay, good. Um, so, so you know, so... Well, I don't so, know if that still happens. That was used to happen. Yeah, so, yeah, don't know. Yeah. So, so you know, so so there's lots of reasons why we're living longer, but but diet is is only one of them. And I told you how to, how to catch a polar bear, didn't I? How? <laughs> I think I told you this. Oh, I can't you, you cut what a hole it? in the ice and kick him in the ice hole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe use your... your, your 
your, your grandma is bait. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. There now you we're go. talking. Now they can talking. live longer. Then. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can eat the liver of your grandma because it stores vitamin no, C no, in there. No, no, eat the liver of the polar bear. Oh, anyway, yeah. who, who's going to eat a I mean, polar bear's apex? So, yeah. All right. So that, that's interesting, Steve. Mm. So anyway, we're learning a little bit there from it, the- um, It is interesting. And it, it opens up a broader question to to what we should eat as a um, as a culture. And it's very tricky because Well, of what we've always said, eat fresh and eat local. Exactly. I mean, typically. That's, I mean, and we can adapt and survive on whatever that happens to be. Yeah. I um, mean, the, the amount of protein is, is interesting if you're at the gym and you want to talk about that. But most cultures have not known what protein is. They've just mm. known that they've consumed it and yeah. um, it's it, it's needed for human health. Yeah. But but it's it's really interesting. If uh, uh, You know, this, this uh, mummy that was found raises fascinating questions of what we should be eating. Um, but but really is it's as you say fresh and local is the two um, sort of golden rules really. All right, second question, Steve. Yeah. Pre post pregnancy microbiome changes. Wow. Um, this fascinates me. Uh, as mine is so different now. Is there any reason for this? Surely something changes. Also, are there any herbs, vegetables that we can add to our foods to help balance this new? Microbiome. Sure. Okay. So, so they're absolutely correct. There is a completely new <laughs> microbiome that grows up when you're pregnant. Right. You, you develop more firmicutes. I was going to say firmicutes yeah. are what adds weight. It does right? add weight. Like in terms of, like you don't want a, a, a ripped baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, who's going to get up on stage? You want the baby to be plump and 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 lots of reserves and. Yep. Over-consuming calories, yeah. um, b- because better to be slightly over than slightly under. Well, also, I mean, you got to remember that this slightly over business has only been around for a few hundred years. Yeah, before that, everything was slightly under because you 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 your risk of starving was much higher. Yeah, uh, a few years ago, like, I'm not even talking a long time ago, like maybe a hundred years ago, there was more starvation, less obesity in the world. If you ever you know, I, I live on the Gold Coast and you go down there and you look at the old photos from the 50s and 60s of all the beach people at the beach. It's very, very oh, I've lean. actually seen a lot of that popping yeah. up lately. Yeah. You know, preservatives in our food, mm. the, the the what I call nutrient devoid food that we are craving, yeah. high in fats, high in sugars and... Um, yeah, we we just we're naturally wired for sugar and fat, right? And so wow. we, when we eat these Doritos, <laughs> yeah, and um, and, you know, and other things as well too that no vitamins and minerals in them, we 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 scarf the stuff down. Our body loves it. Our microbiome then feeds the the bacteria that craves. It's a vicious circle. It's yeah, terrible vicious circle. So the microbiome then, of course, go along and. Uh, uh, the, the sugar-feeding microbiome, of course, thrive mm. in the gut if you're having a lot of sugars, obviously, and they thrive by secreting poisons to kill the other microbiome. And the way they do it Competitive is they, exclusion. Yeah, yeah. They 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 knock them out. So so you're actually ending up in this. You actually become physiologically addicted to the sugar. It's crazy, isn't it? It really is. And, dangerous. and so this is where fasting. Um, and again, some of the ancients had it right. Like fasting can definitely help. I know a lot of people use that. Um, uh, no eating after six, you yeah. know, like t- uh, like twelve and fourteen hour fast and that yeah. sort of stuff. Warrior diets and stuff like that. Kind of what and, I do. And we've seen warrior diet. Oh no, no, I think no! That's I was fasting like after one or two hours a day, right? Yeah, like, yeah, crazy. no, but, no, no. I don't but I think I think the benefits around that. Um, like 12, like 14 hour fast. We'll say yeah. 16 hour fast. Is it Steve? What is it? 16, 16. Was, was the optimum. Yeah. I, I typically do about 14 a day now. Now, only because 16, you know, I'm not overweight or anything like that. And I restrict what I eat with regards to, um, you know, the, the types of food I eat, mm. which I think is vastly more important. Well, it's funny too, as well, too. And I don't know, we're going to do a blood. A, a blood type diet. Yes. But I, I really responded really, really well to eating a ketogenic based, based yep. diet. Now, I know that there's pros and cons yep. and people go, oh, you know, so, but for me personally, mm. my energy levels were excellent, felt good. Um, and obviously, I was getting a really broad spectrum of um, vegetables and things mm. like that that I'd eat a lot of. Mm. And then, as I said, probably um, uh, once. Uh, once a week after I'd got into ketogenesis, I would stop eating all proteins and fats for a period of time and just eat like oranges and mm. apples and lots of fiber-based foods as well too, but just as a bit of a change. But oh, yeah. uh, it worked for me. It so, works great. And, and you've got to find what works for you. So so coming back to, to Elsa's question, and that's yeah. us this one as well too. Mm-hmm. So the, I guess, you know, what are some of the things and herbs and vegetables that we should add now that you've had a baby? Is there oh. anything that you should do? Because um, obviously, as you said, Steve, our, our bodies are hormonal. 
um, and, and the link in the uh, you know between the gut and hormones mm-hmm. and the brain and everything like that is really profound. Really strong. So what should we be doing to to look after ourselves, the mum, and yep. also the baby? All right. The great news is that what's healthy for the mum is usually great for the baby as well. There's not usually you know if you're going to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and polyphenol rich spices and herbs, they're still going to be good for the baby. Yeah. But particularly good. So so let, let's be really specific. Things like cinnamon. Yeah. It's very good because it increases insulin sensitivity. Yeah. And when you're pregnant, you're much more prone to getting type 2 diabetes or, you know, pregnancy-induced diabetes. So, you know, those sort of specific herbs that are very, very good for blood sugar is very good for your gut and are very good for, you, for your baby as well. Yeah, right. So any of those sort of foods are very good. So loads of vegetables, fruits, coloured things are still good if you're pregnant, if you're breastfeeding, if anything. How much cinnamon do you need, Steve? About a gram a day. Is that all? Yeah. Does it, need to, does it need to touch your oral? Like, does it need to be in your mouth? No. So this, you could even just take a straight work. capsule. Absolutely. And, and I mean, you know, cinnamon is pretty easy to get your hands on. And, and again, what you're looking at then, I guess, with the, the fruits and that is, is low GI stuff, Steve. Yep. And again, you're getting all the benefits of the polyphenol. Yep. So this is where it's funny. I remember a few years ago and I, I just couldn't work it out. And I'm talking like 10 years ago when I was talking to mates of mine and we were into bodybuilding and getting yep. really lean and that. Oh, no, fruit, fruit's bad. Avoid yeah. the fruit, right? And yeah. it's like... It just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, come on. I mean, I know that there's sugars in there, but mm. they're low GI. And, mm. you know, and again, you got to remember, this is sort of like, you know, probably two decades ago, let's face it, actually. Yeah. Now. And it's like, no, 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 no that's, that's really good for you. It yes. really, the, the overall benefit is definitely going to outweigh a little bit of carbohydrates and sugars. Absolutely. Right? There, there, there are some instances where you want to eliminate carbohydrates very, very strictly. Yeah. But weight loss is not one of them. For example, if, if a child has refractory, epilepsy right about yes. 100 years you ago. want the ketones right correct and and the other appointment if someone's got refractory say migraines or other neurological diseases um then my uh, ketogenic diet is, is is one of the best diets for the prevention of migraines so coming back to elsa's question yep. just so that we understand yes your microbiome has changed but yes add in things like cinnamon yep. add in things like and you're probably already doing this elsa you know your blueberries yep. your raspberries those sorts of things yep. maybe make a smoothie in the morning and have mm. that rather than have your oats or your your toast and your bread and those sorts of things That's could right. be a really good place to go. And add in cinnamon, Steve. Yep. Um, I mean, you, you can. Nutmeg. I love nutmeg. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. Especially coming into Christmas, right? Yeah. Um, eggnog. Um, it's got milk in it. Um, <laughs> but anyway. The, and the, tons of sugar. And t- yeah, t- yeah, yeah. Um, but – what you could do then is is um, is then look for other polyphenols to add in, you know, around that time. So long as they're coming from natural sources, yep. uh, you know, again, which all polyphenols, let's face it, they do. Yeah. But, you know, that's not going to cause any harm for the baby. Oh, and big salads for lunch and big vegetables and meats for dinner. And the, and the bitter stuff as well too, Steve, yeah. like those bitter leaves. Yeah. Um, they're really great. The dandelion leaves and that sort of thing. Dandelion, you know, that, yeah. yeah. Those sort of things are you very good for you. It's got the purple, like it's almost like, it almost looks like rhubarb. It's not rhubarb. No. Actually, rhubarb's pretty good for yeah, you. Yeah, rhubarb's good for you. Yeah. Actually, yeah. you know, I used to eat rhubarb and custard literally every night for dessert when growing up in New Zealand. Right. We used to grow our own rhubarb Ooh, and eat rhubarb. Nice. But, yeah, you don't see it much nah, anymore. It's very tart. It's, 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 it is. You know, the, the younger generation of today wouldn't eat the tart stuff. Oh, just I wonder, actually, it. I wonder if, if we've got any listeners, anyone under the age of 25 who's ever – Eating rhubarb, <laughs> I would like to know because, as I said, rhubarb. You're right, Steve. It's really tart, yeah, yeah. and my mum used to like boil up, right? Yeah. And I can remember it smelling. She'd throw quite a bit of sugar, sugar in with it, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like you still got those rich polyphenols yeah. from the rhubarb as well, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, and and when when I was younger, when we were younger, we were more active. Uh, all right. Anyway, so yeah. I'll, also hopefully that helps. Moving on, Steve. Next one. Yeah. What is gut instinct? Uh, you know the feeling. Um, when something just does not feel right. Is there any science around I have this gut feeling? Should I trust my gut? Lauren? Well, this is interesting. And yeah. see, before you give the scientific reason yeah, here, it's really good it, it is funny, right? I yeah. mean, it's sort of it's like, there's some really fascinating things, Steve, and I don't know if you've heard of this sort of stuff, and, and I'll come back to this gut instinct thing. So, and Simon Sinek talks about the lim- limbic brain, I think it is. Limbic system. Um, and the Neolithic brain and the, all these sorts of things that feel things very, very deeply that he says that our body has an inability to be able to put into um, uh, words. And he says, there's a, and again, I, sorry, Simon, I know he listens to the podcast, <laughs> um, but, and I'm probably trampling all over it, but it's the ability of which intuition and things that the brain, because the amount of things that, and again, I'm trampling over this because 
because I haven't read any of this. I'm just going based right. on memory. But the amount of things that we pick up, yeah, they're far more than what the conscious brain can handle. Absolutely. But our subconscious brain is consistently taking in information. Yeah. Our skin's mm. taking in information. Our mm. nose is taking in information. All of our senses are working all of the mm. time. If we, if we actually consciously were aware of all of them, we'd literally go insane yeah, because we would. wouldn't be able to um, deal with the amount of stimulus input. Exactly. But with regards to the, 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 I think they call it the limbic brain or something like that, yeah. the limbic system, is that some things that we understand or that we, 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 we pick up on with our faculties, we don't actually have the ability to be able to express. Yeah. So therefore, I think some people are more in tune to this than others. And again, this is Jeff's hypothesis. This is not proven by science, this part. Mm -hmm. But I think some people are more intuitive, probably because they have learned to, like anything, that muscle, learn to um, listen to it, learn to be more open to it. Um, and I look at gut instinct as this. Um, and look, there could be other people that say there's spiritual aspects to it. I'm, I'm, I'm not that way inclined per se. Um, I, I believe that there are actually spiritual gifts, but this is, that's a completely different story. Yeah. But as far as gut instinct is concerned, yeah. what I believe it is, and yeah. again, I'm happy for feedback yeah. on this, Steve. You might come at it from a more scientific um, sort of point, yeah. is that um, you're, you're taking in a lot of information and data. You, your brain works it out. Uh, people that are more sort of trusting their gut they might be picking up on body language. So let's just say we're talking to a person yeah. or you, you might be putting all this information in and your brain's actually going, hang on, this wind and this crane above you with this thing. You know what I mean? Like there, there could be, hang on a minute, you see somebody driving and you see that they're just driving a little bit strangely if you, you yeah. know, and all of a sudden you're just like, you know what, I'm just going to back off a little bit yeah. or, you know what, I don't feel I can trust that person. Yeah. Tony is the most discerning person I have ever met in my life. Now, I think it's the way that she's wired. But she I married you. She's a genius, <laughs> Steve. She doesn't like you very much, though. No, uh, no she loves oh, you. I love Tony. No, no, she loves you, Steve. Yeah. Um, but no, I think um, some people are more wired to it. Some people are more open to it. Some yeah. people, I think, that channel that pathway, whatever it is. That's my feeling mm. of gut instinct. When you're mm. just feeling uneasy, mm. I think it's your senses picking up on things and you being more open to it and going, something just doesn't yeah. feel right. Does does what I'm saying make sense? It actually makes a lot of sense because in, in the brain, and, and before I get on to the, the bowels, which they're, they're, they're intimately linked, by the way, but there's three levels of the brain. And, and the only part you're talking about is the conscious part, where, mm -hmm. where, but there, there's two other layers in there. And they're called the lizard brain. The lizard brain, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what Simon Sinek talks about, the lizard yeah. brain. Yeah. So you've got the lizard brain, which is a layer below, and then you've got the, the, the very core of the brain, like the brain stem, which regulates temperature and all that crap that we're not really aware of. Like I'm not, I'm not telling my heart to beat every but minute. But you second. have heard ninja masks and all yep. this who actually do learn to tap into that to slow yes. their heartbeat yeah. to be able to sit out in cold like yep. so i believe that all things yeah. it's like and people go oh that's impossible well i'll tell you what messi and ronaldo could do on the soccer pitch would be impossible for most people yeah. to do yet they do it because they practice it right that's so, right so, so, same thing and you can you can stop you stop breathing for a certain amount of time like a <gasps> Yeah, but, but eventually you pass out and all that sort of thing. So you've got this the, the, the brain that's ticking away in the background. Then you've got the lizard brain, which is the feelings brain, which is like the, oh, she's hot, isn't she, if I'm allowed to say that anymore. No, you know, you're not. No, okay. Oh, he's hot, isn't he? <laughs> not allowed to say that anymore. No, so, they're but, hot. Yeah, they're hot, that's right. But you're not you, allowed to make actual comments on physical attributes. And, and, and that that's the lizard brain. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll make it politically more correct, lizard brain. Let's say you're walking along the bush and you see something that looks like this, a snake. Right. Okay. You, you don't go, oh, it's a snake. Is it a red belly or a brown? Or let's see, is it dangerous? Oh, it's oh, biting it is. me. Oh, I'll jump. No, you jump. And then you go, oh, it's a stupid grass snake or a green tree snake, which are harmless. But but your first instinct is to jump out of the way of danger. And that's your lizard brain. So that, that's your second layer going, doing its thing, which is like reacting to your environment quickly to save your life. Mm. Because, you know, you, I'd rather jump than be not jump. Give a really good in indication of a lizard brain at work. Ever yeah. watching the football, which I watch a lot of, yeah. and they miss a goal or something like that. Oh, yeah. How many times do you see it? Yeah. Like collectively, yeah. everybody puts their hands on their head. Why? Yeah. Why does everybody, when something bad happens, they go, oh, mm -hmm. why? Why do we do? Why the heck do we do that? Well, Steve, bad, right? bad things that protect your organs. Probably. So you protect your head. So there, well, there you see that, that other one as well too. It's like I'll sacrifice this, this yeah, limb yeah. To, to look after my head. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah. That reminds me of, of when I was, you know, studying things like um, homeopathy when I was studying it in the '90s in naturopathy. I thought it was a load of shit, if I can say the word. What's shit. that? Homeopathy. 
Um, because I thought, how does this work? I can't see how it'll work. It doesn't mm. work. And, and then I had to do the clinic of it and it was the most popular thing we did. It was, everyone would come back for treatment. So, oh, that really helped. And I went, I'll go, really? You know, because it theoretically. And a lot of people would go, oh, okay, well, it's just placebo. Now, if it is placebo, now I don't think that it is. I think, you know, with homeopathic stuff, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't know 1% of 1% about it. And, yeah, and, 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 and so, therefore, I reserve judgment. Yeah. I'm not going to say, yeah, it works or no, it doesn't work, right? I know a lot of people swear black and blue by it. We but there are that. double blind placebo trials on homeopathy. Like uh, I remember one on Arnica for bruising. Yes. And it works. Dr. Isaac Goldie. Oh yeah, he he is a he is a smart he's, man, he's and PhD. I think he should be. And he's done. He did his thesis. I well, think. he did a PhD. In, he did a PhD in, in the eighties. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a, yeah. Oh, he's a guru. So he's a industry. smart guy. So oh. I am going to defer to him, and I believe him. I like him. I think he was part of the Health Australia Party or something like yep. that as well too. He was. Um, ran for Senate in ninety in two thousand and fifteen. Did he? Because, because I was I, I was asked to run second on the ticket for that one. <laughs> Steve, we, I knew you then. Did we talk about <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, we I did talk so. about did, this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, seriously, since um, COV19 is out, I'm just like, oh, man, I just I just feel like literally my brain has gone into a warp. Like, seriously, yeah. if you could just be pushed off a flight of stairs and hit every unfortunate thing on the way down over the last couple of years, yeah. you know, like, and then again, and then I see other friends that have gone through some real heartache, but I, it's just been such a traumatic couple of years that I've forgotten, mm. Steve. I've forgotten. I forgot that, but look, I do like Isaac Gold. Oh, he's, he's very, very smart. Yeah. Um, and, and look, we are talking about gut instinct. And um, what, what we do know is that, you know, you know, the chemical in your brain called serotonin. I think most of our listeners would know serotonin is the feel good, happy, a neurotransmitter that's in our brain that it, it, certain drugs we won't mention them, but fluoxetin is a is a is fluoxetin. Yeah, fluoxetin with an F is is a drug that so I won't mention the brand name, but that's as an SSRI, which is the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, and that increases serotonin in the brain and relieves depression. That's yep. what it's, it's designed for. You've got way more serotonin in your gut than you do in your brain. Yeah, right. So if you get stressed, serotonin levels drop dramatically. They'll drop even more dramatically in your gut. So if you have a stressful event, you will feel it in your gut. This program is proudly brought to you by uh, our birthday cake. <laughs> now, if there's any time you should take some time off, it's a birthday. Now, uh, yeah. now, 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 now. Okay. My we've got, we've got a couple of different styles of bars. Yes. And the one that we've launched at the moment has been the... Um, the collagen jelly style. Mm. Now we've got um, toffee, which I think is good, very mm. strong flavour. Mm. Some people love it, some people don't. Uh, the chocolate, which is probably the number one seller at the moment, yep, and, I love it. and I think the best in terms of creation of the flavour is the chocolate orange. That's amazing. We've got two it? new flavours coming. Yep. One of those flavours, which is coming out for our birthday, Steve, uh. our late birthday. Um, uh, I think uh, as this is airing, these. If they're not available, they should be very close to being available yeah. is our birthday cake flavour. Now, Steve. Yes. This is my favourite flavour of all of the bars, including the other pineapple flavour, which is also coming out as oh. well too. This is the best way to describe it from my point of view is like a Neapolitan ice cream. That's what it tastes like. Mm. It's like like it's it's got chocolate, it's got vanilla, and then it's got strawberry, and it's very creamy taste. I've only ever tried it once when they, you know, when when the, the girls were ringing around saying, "Oh, try this new flavor." Oh, that's amazing! And then I, I, I saw that the other day, just, yeah, well, yesterday actually, the first time I saw the packaging, yeah. and I went, "Oh, are they out?" Oh, and uh, not no, yet. No, not so, yet. no, not yet, no, yet, no, no, yet, no, no. We're just we're just doing trials and stuff like that. Damn. But um, and and again, you know, twenty grams of protein, yeah, um, all the health stuff too. Yeah, uh, n- no artificial flavors mm. or, or colors. High in protein, no yeah. gluten, high in fiber. Um, it's yeah, tick tick the box, and it's got all of those. Sorts and of and I know where I work and all that sort of thing. But but you know, like the drink on here is this is ATP drink, and it's natural, mm. all natural colors. It's yellow, but it's mm. natural. Yep. It's actually good for you. Yeah, I think we use for the colors. I think we actually use like like sweet potato. Yeah, um, phenol rich foods. Yeah, which is funny, right? Yeah. And again, and I've said this before, um, for people that generally care about their health, not just their performance. Yeah. The flavors that we use, because we contract manufacture for other brands as well too, yes. uh, and we keep that with the strict amount of, of secrecy. Yep. Um, 
Uh, and a lot of people don't use artif- uh, don't use natural; they use artificial, and that's sure. fine for yeah. you know for, for people like us. Steve, we care about it. Other yeah. brands, we don't. That's right. But the reason why is it's on average four hundred percent more expensive to use natural flavors and colors than what it is to use artificial. Absolutely. So I understand why a lot of brands don't, but yeah. we only use the natural stuff. Absolutely, so. and that's why I don't mind drinking. Like there's there's actually two ATP drinks in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's like, because you can, you're not doubling up on flavors because the flavors are healthy. Yeah. You know, the colors are healthy. Yeah. So it's very good for you. So that anyway, makes it with a gut instinct. That's, that an, that's enough about us. A yeah. shameless flog. That's absolutely. Uh, product flog. But anyway. So, uh, next thing, do gut bugs impact my waistline? Now, can I, oh. can I, can I answer this one? Sure. Answer yes, it. they do. 100%. Yes. Um, and again, I'm going to give the brief overview, Steve, and you can dive yeah, yeah, into okay, it in more sure. detail. But you want to have good ratio. Yeah. So it's not like all gut, one type of gut bag is bad. Mm. But so let's let's say if it's 50 50, it's not. Uh, I think it's 60 40, Steve. Yeah, is that what it's more firmicutes. Yep. Um, firmicutes, yeah. And, and most people have an overabundance of firmicutes because, as we said before, we crave sweet. Mm. Um, sugary and and salty foods, right? Like these are the things that we we naturally sure. crave. Typically, sweet foods in that feed firmicutes. Firmicutes, the, so bacteriodoides and firmicutes are the two sort of dominant phyla, yeah, yeah, of of gut bugs. It's like the species, if mm. that makes sense. Mm. Firmicutes, when you feed them foods that are, are, are high in sugars and things like that, they then start replicating more and more. They then send out, as Steve said, sort of, you know, poisons which kill off the bacteriodoides mm. and they take more space. Yeah. And then they they make you crave mm. more of that type of food that feeds them. Yeah. But in realistic sense, and where we used to do a lot better, exercise, especially exercise that creates carbon mucus, um, feeds really good bacteriodoides, which makes you lean like achamansia. Mm. Um, you've got um, other bitters, um, other... Uh, polyphenols, mm. which actually help to keep firmicutes in balance. Now, do we need firmicutes? Yes, yes. but we need them kept in check. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem is that most people consume foods that create a vicious cycle that make you cu- eat more foods, which feed the firmicutes, which as we say, and I know it's a cliche, but it's just easy to remember, mm. firmicutes do not make you firm and cute. They make you fat and ugly. <laughs> they might not make you ugly, but they make you fat. Yeah. So, so yes, that's my answer. But Steve, you can do it far more no, eloquently that, that, than I that's can. That's actually very accurate because the, the, the gut, the, in the olden days, when I was studying nutrition, it was like, this is 100 calories. Therefore, when you eat that, you will get 100 calories. Okay. If you've got loads of firmicutes and this is 100 calories, this could end up being, you know, 120 because you could be absorbing more of the fibers and more of the non calorific uh, things out of it. Yeah. And that's a simplistic way yeah. of, of explaining a, 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 a difficult thing. That's right. So, in other words, your body becomes m- more adept at sucking nutrients like out of it yeah. and, and sort of proliferating bad gut bugs and potentially fat. Cells. Correct. Now, Whereas if you're eating better styles of food yep. and even things like resistant starches yep. but polyphenols and all the rest of it, yeah. you're becoming leaner and more efficient and 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 less pr- prolifer- proliferative. I can't say that yeah, word. Yeah, prolifer- proliferative of the bad bacteria. There you go. Yeah, yeah, we, easy we, for him to say. We, we, we call it bad, but but if we were that ice band 5,300 years ago, I would want loads of firmicutes in my gut. Absolutely. But the difference is, Steve, you might have been eating an elk you know, like elk meat every second day or something. Correct, and, yeah. You know, you, you might you might have been trudging through the snow, putting yeah. up with extreme temperature where your body's burning ridiculous amounts of heat yeah. uh, as opposed to rolling out of bed, rolling downstairs, yeah. having your cuckoo poofs, yeah. uh, which you get from Aldi. They don't have Cocoa Pops. Um, oh. You know, uh, <laughs> then, then jumping in your car, uh, driving here, then sitting, sitting here at your day. desk, then going home and then collapsing on the couch, wondering why you're so exhausted. Yeah. Uh, literally, you've taken probably less than 2,000 steps in the day yeah. and you've eaten high levels of sugar because your body's craving them. You're nodding off at 3 o'clock in the afternoon yep. because you're, you're looking for a sugar hit. Um, you know, and then after dinner, you're like, man, where's the biscuit jar? Where's my ice cream? Yeah. And if that sounds familiar, it's simply because you're in a trap. It sounded familiar to me it's years ago when I was younger yeah. and yeah. healthier. Yeah. 
I was, I was that that was me. Yep. I remember for morning tea, I would have a can of Coke, yep. and a jam donut. Yep, that was morning tea. I remember for me, Steve, it was um, it was a uh, 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 an iced coffee. Yep, and and a pie. Oh, yeah. It was like because I was a tradie yeah. as well. Like yeah. I used to, I used to work for for. I worked in a lab. I, I used to work for a subsidiary of, of Telstra called Vision Stream, putting in sort of stuff. And I, I didn't know anything really that much. I actually, it was that that time I started getting really interested in in, in working out. So well, it's funny because you know, like like uh, what a lot of people do is what I used to do, which was when I got tired at work, I would eat sugar. Sure, uh, because you didn't know anything about nutrition back then, and I just thought that sugar peps you up or something. Good so, for the brain, yeah. brain fuel. So, so you, you and there's this stuff called Coca Cola, which had caffeine and sugar. So I drink that a lot, and I was like, "Oh, this will give me more energy," and it really didn't. And I was fatigued, and I couldn't sleep, and I was sick. Well, it might give you a bit of a spike, but then yeah, then you fall off again. Yeah, but but you you you, you thought that once you fell off the wagon, you needed more of it. <laughs> I guess it was my thinking. It wasn't logical, mm. you know. And I'd have wheat bix for breakfast, and I thought I was healthy for eating that. You sure. Know? Yeah. And um, it's just it's just so different to what what we really should be eating. Yeah, it's it's so far removed from it. And so my firmicutes were 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 going through the roof. And um, you know I, I was never overweight, but I would just watch what I ate when I when I ate too much. All right, Absolutely. Steve. Steve. So the yes, yes, absolutely. It, you, your Very gut so. can influence your waistline. Um, how do I get rid of upper stomach bloat? This yeah. is interesting, Steve. Interesting, isn't really it? interesting. Because yeah. a lot of people do suffer from bloating. They and, do. And the, and the, so what's going on there? Gas okay. is obviously being creating through f- fermentation. Correct, exactly. Um, so so upper stomach, upper GI is your stomach. If you if you sort of you see you Google this, but you can see a picture of an anatomy of a person. You see that the first thing that goes down your esophagus and it hits your stomach. Now, when you get upper bloating, it is usually in the stomach area. So stomach area is full of acid. And um, if your acid's very low, then the food doesn't digest. It ferments. Now, when you ferment food, you get gas. So this is where you get that distension and bloating. So in the old days, we'd give people hydrochloric acid supplementation and it just gives them acid in their stomach to help digest food. That's one thing. But the very first thing you should do is watch what you're eating. Yeah. Fermentation usually occurs with carbohydrate-rich foods. Yeah. So if you're having too many carbohydrate-rich foods, it can cause fermentation of the stomach. What about legumes, Steve? Now, legumes are good, but yeah. my understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, you need to build up the um, the acids in the stomach to actually it's – like, it's like training with weights. You don't yeah. go straight away to the leg press and do 200-kilo squats. No. You build up to it. Correct. Now, legumes are great, high in fibre mm. – Good levels of, of 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 protein as well too. Yep. There are other compounds in there, but if you go, <laughs> it reminds me of my split pea soup that I gave working at the Snow Deli. Ooh. Remember that? And I oh, had to run through and just story, about crap yeah. my pants because it just went straight through me. Right. Yeah. So you you have to build up a tolerance to it as Correct. well too, and that includes motivating the stomach acids to be able to break down that sort of stuff. But what about things like? Um, uh, from pineapple, Steve, and from poor bromelain, poor, yep. bromelain and, and 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 papain. Is it papain? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, papaya, yeah, yep. yep. which is the the papaya, enzymes. Papaya. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But those things can help a lot with, and they're natural. Yep. I had a friend of mine that used to use a lot of pineapple, especially after eating meats and things like yes. that, to actually help with digestion. So, I don't know if you've ever eaten a lot of pineapple to the point, and it's almost like, oh, they're all the acids like burning my mouth, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and again, scurvy. you want your own natural. Um, Juices mm. flowing, Steve, in your mm. guts. That sounds a bit wrong, but, it's but true. yeah. But what else can you do to All sort right. of help? You, you can support the microbiome in your gut because yep. you've got a lot of um, acid-loving bacteria. One of them that people might have heard of is Acidophilus. Yeah, you haven't heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's a microbiome that now that that's a firmicute. It is a firmicute. Yeah, um, and you know it's it's beneficial if you take it orally. It's not really it doesn't make its way down to the large column very much. And if you see it in the stool test, it's usually because someone's taken it as right. a capsule. Yep. So it's not not a commensal down there, but it can live in the stomach. So there are microbes that live in the stomach in the loving the acid environment. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some bad ones in there too. You got to watch out for. One of them is called Helicobacter pylori. Oh yeah, I have heard of that. H pylori. Is what, what causes that? Where does it come from? How oh, can you for, get it? About 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 
Well, there's one three people three. in this room. Yep. One of us has got it, yep. probably. Matt's got it. Matt's got it. Yeah, he's got a lot of things. He's got a lot of <laughs> monkey diseases and stuff so, like that so, too, but so, we don't so, want to talk about those yeah. monkey diseases. Yeah. <laughs> monkey diseases. You don't want to ask him how he got the monkey diseases either. No. I think too much know. time at the zoo, if you ask yeah, me. That's right. Yeah, that's so, right. So so, H. polarizing is, 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 can be a commence on a lot of people. Right. And it has a slight benefit in reducing asthma, um, which is a weird, which is a re- weird correlation. It is. But anyway, if it's – Growing too much. It's like going to the gym. It's like doing squats with 200 kilos is good for you if you're strong enough to tolerate that yep. and it'll help to help your legs. Mm. But if your leg is broken mm. or you're like me who's, you know, 170 pounds, I better talk pounds, um, I, I'd be squashed like a buck. Incredible. And I was, as a naturopath, one of the very first things when I started practising was was everything wrong because I'd, I'd see – Joe Six back there who eats badly and, and eats like you've described. And I'd say, well, the best thing I can do is change everything in their lifestyle. Too much. Yeah. Too and shock. I wouldn't do it. And then yeah. I'd look at them and go, why didn't you do it? And it's like, Too oh, I just, you know, you know, and they'd come up with many excuses. And then I was realised I was at fault because I wasn't graduating them yeah. and just going through it. And eventually you work with these people and you ask them what they can change and that sort of thing. But small changes is the best way to go. I mean, I'd, I'd love and to Small get- changes can result in ma- – and, and yep. small changes can make massive results. Correct. Um, and, and even a relatively short time. And this is the thing. I don't want to discourage people because changes can happen quite quickly, even with small changes. Yes. It's, it's remarkable how, how you've got to actually adapt yourself when you're telling people what to do with – and they pay you to do it. You know, when I was a naturopath, they said, well, what can I do to change? And, and it was all about incremental change. That's why I love those bars and I love these drinks is because they, they can get you off, you know, your morning Coca-Cola and you might have a, a caffeinated beverage that's full of natural stuff that's very good for your brain anyway. So getting back to this upper yeah. stomach bloat, Steve, yeah. let's say you've got upper stomach bloat mm. right now. What should you do okay. and what should you not do? All right. First thing is we treat the symptoms to get rid of them out of the discount. So you can take a hydrochloric acid supplement. Yep. The second thing is you do is you can take- But we don't want to take that long term. That's no, just no, no. That's for yep. the, the and, and this is the thing that we say. Western yep. medicine, you know, and yep. intervention is great if you've got a big problem, like Tony yep. with a bloody frozen shoulder. Yeah. But long term, we want to find out what the root is and yep. then focus on natural remedies to, folk, to, you to can, replace You can that. kill uh, bad bacteria there with polyphenol-rich supplements. That would be a great place to start. Great and place again, to start. we've a lot of people with this sort of stuff as well too and they go on to say yep. using it three times a day like a 10-day challenge yep. or something like that the results can actually be overwhelming so sometimes herxheimer reaction type steve yep. so sometimes uh, it's better off just to ease into it especially into if it's it. an well, acute obviously. problem yep. and, and thirdly try and identify the foods that are causing the bloat mm. um, because you know one man's food is another man's poison and what is great for me may not be great for the next person and i know we're we're going to do blood type diet things but that that sort of thing is people who just have natural lower stomach acid concentrations like a blood types with like me um so we may not be able to tolerate um as much say protein all at once as an o blood type that has loads of stomach acid mm. just for example uh, there's just, you know we're, we're talking about blood types but it could also just be the individual mm. Yeah, so graduate them to a slightly healthier diet. Identify the offending foods, and it doesn't mean they're offending. They're they're going to you're going to be off them forever. Mm. But like your split pea um, soup analogy, that 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 would be very good for you over a period of time. Like and, and, and like guys, with any of these sorts of things as well yeah. too, if you do actually have a disease, if you actually have got something, you need to go and see your healthcare practitioner. Yes. This this information that Steve and I are talking about is just information. Yeah. It's stuff that you can bring up with them. Yeah. But please don't consider this to be um, health advice. This is really for information so that you can go and talk to um, a, a healthcare practitioner, your doctor, mm-hmm. your naturopath, um, you know, whoever it may be, and actually find out specifically how you can get treatment. So, yeah, yeah, just food for thought. Exactly. Food for thought. And you practitioner can order a hydrogen breath test, the test for helicobacter pylori, for example. Okay. Yeah, so you can get that tested for. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, Artificial sweetness, Steve. Oh, How do they impact the gut and are they addictive? (laughs) Well, yes, they very badly impact the gut. Now, we did a podcast on this probably I say five months, six months ago. I don't even think it was that long ago, oh, Steve. Okay. Yeah, uh, not that long ago. So, so please refer back to that one. But basically, and, and Matt, you're going to flash up on the screen what the uh, artificial sweetener podcast was. Episode three hundred and thirty-four.
magic of technology. So yep. for those that are listening on uh, Spotify, it'll be in the notes down the bottom. Yep. Um, so so just j- jump onto that. Um, but yeah, in the ATP project, we have done one specifically on artificial. I think we ranked the, oh, the good, yeah. the bad, and the ugly, right? So like we said, hey, these ones are – uh, uh, bad. These yeah. ones are m- m- moderate, and these ones are actually good for, good you, for you. Based on non, I think it was non nutritive sweetness. Non nutritive. But, we, yeah. but we did talk about artificial, artificial sweetness. Yeah, and basically they're all bad. Yes, they are bad for your guts. Now, now that's it, the artificial sweetness. Yeah, the artificial yes. ones. Now, the, the let, let, let's just say one of them sucralose. When you take sucralose, it, it, it binds to your sweet receptors mm-hmm. and then goes straight through your guts and you don't absorb it. So there's virtually no calories, but you get sweetness. So it sounds good in theory, but when it's going through the gut microbiome and you've got trillions of microbes there, it kills a lot of them off. So it actually is very bad for you. Because it's bound with a chlorine molecule, right? Yeah, it is. Three chlorine molecules. Right. Okay. It's tri- trichlorosucralose. Is yeah. the, is the is sucrose. Right. Trichlorosucrose, which mm. is sucrose, which is like table sugar. And it's got three chlorines attached to it, so it doesn't get absorbed. Mm. It becomes very what they call polar, so it doesn't break down. Yeah. So it just goes straight through. It sounds good. Well, it sounds like a, a wrench through machinery, Steve. It's yeah. not supposed to be there. Exactly. <laughs> Try and put something through your engine. Oh, that's look, not oil. We've thrown the wrench into this machine. Look, it's coming out the other end. Yeah. The machine's just all broken, broken. and teeth are missing. And but, but the machine didn't absorb the. T- <laughs> Well, if that's your definition yeah. of success, yeah, success, success, and, uh, and, yeah. and and it was in the eighties because they thought, well, it's coming out the other end, so therefore it like, does nothing, does nothing. You just touch it here, and then it comes straight out. It's I mean, like, almost it's like there's always the pipe at bay. Exactly, it, it's like bulimia. It's like yeah, yeah get to taste it. Blah. Yeah. it's like well, hang on a minute, that's not good for you. No. And it's like the old thing where, where, where we have battles with, with dietitians about vitamins. It's like, oh, no, they go through, you get expensive urine. It's like, but what does it do on the way through? Mm. You know, like, you, you, you know, you, you, you may as well not have fiber then or water. I'm drinking water here like an idiot because that's going to come out of me into the toilet in, you know, later on today. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's a waste of time drinking water. Mm. It's, it's, it's that analogy. You've got to think what it actually does mm. in the body. And this is through. the whole thing about, I mean, we talk about obviously turmeric and black pepper. Yep. You know, people go, oh, it's better absorption. It doesn't work that no, way. And this is the problem, right? The devil's in the detail absorb. sometimes. Yeah. So You don't want yeah. to absorb things like, you know, if you're taking yeah. acidophilus, for example, and we all yeah. mentioned that before, you don't want to absorb it. Mm. <laughs> you want it to go through if, if it's If it's a chronic issue, then you know yeah. nature knows best. If it's an acute issue and you need an intervention, great. But that shouldn't be the long term no. treatment. So no I mean, again, treatment. that's my philosophy. Absolutely. Steve. Now, so, now is it addictive? Uh, aspartame can be addictive, right? Because it does activate nerves in the body. Yeah, right. Yeah, in your brain. So okay. it can be addictive artificially. It can be. Not yeah. all of them. Some of them can be. No, not you, all. You, yeah. Aspartame is known to be addictive. As, right. Say it's a sulfamide potassium. Okay. It's like Ace K. That's Ace K. Yeah. yeah, which I really don't like yeah, that it's one. It's not a good yeah. one. No. <laughs> um, I think it was last in our ranking when, our, when we did our, our podcast. It's funny because it literally, and again, I think I said this in that podcast as well too, the whole reason I got interested in natural um, flavors and natural colors and, you know, even the water we drink and eating organic where possible and fresh and local. And look, we just can't, you can't do it all the time, right? No. No, nobody's perfect. No. But if you make more conscious decisions to do more of that, mm. um, I think you're going to limit the the impact. Um, but it was Ace K that kicked that whole thing off. Oh, I just yeah. went, hang on a minute, that's this can't be really right. How come this is not mainstream all over the news? This and, is terrible. And what's what 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 I don't get about artificial sweeteners these days is because there's completely natural sweeteners that the ATP use 100 percent of the time. We don't use any of this artificial stuff. Mm. Any of our products, mm. they're all natural and they taste great. Yeah, they literally taste fantastic. Well, we would not recommend anything at all that we believe is not ultimately healthy for you and not good for you. That's right. Um, be- because at the end of the day, we-, we want to provide products for people that they can use that that will definitely improve their performance or yep. w- achieve their goals. Um, have to be a, 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 a net, oh, a net, I, a net, I, a net I, benefit, I take them and, and, not, and not considered to be bad for your health. I give them to the wife, um, even though. Well, I still like her, I guess. <laughs> You'd love her, Steve. <laughs> she doesn't love you so much, though. Yeah, no, sometimes she does. Um, all right. Now, yeah. we're coming back to your area of expertise, Steve. Ooh, what is it? What a naturopath is probably most familiar with. What? Bowels? Poo. poo. Yeah. God, right. you so, be bloody so poo questions for you. Great. Let's all go. Right. Oh. Um, uh, we've got a multiple choice. Uh, choose your poo. Okay, um, good. Let's get to this quickly. <laughs> poo. Okay, poo questions. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. All right. What is my poo float? Poo floats because it's usually high in fats and fats float on water. And when you poo, you poo in the water. So the poo 
floats if it's high in fat. What about fibre? Does fibre do that fiber or Fibre does because it traps air. Right. And so the poo then floats with air okay. as well. Yep, cool. Um, why do I wake up at night to do a number one and not a number two? Oh, this is a, this is a complex thing. But, but you think about your heart pumping all night, right? Yep. Well, 100% of the time. Now, <laughs> now the, the way your kidneys work is that the heart actually pushes blood through the kidneys. Right. And so they're constantly working 24-7. Right. Your bowels work via peristalsis. Right. Okay, a, a wavy thing. Yeah. And that actually shuts down when you sleep. Ah. Yeah, except some people it doesn't and you get like people with IBS. And right, right, I won't right. tell you the consequences of that, but that can be nasty. And that's rare usually. So usually your peristalsis is an active process that slows down at night. The passive process of your heart pumping doesn't stop at night. It slows down, doesn't stop. Um why do I need to run to the toilet when I'm nervous? <laughs> well, remember we talked about serotonin and all yes, that sort of thing. Yes. Well, well, if you if you see it with animals and birds are the classic ones, if you scare a bird, they will poop and fly because yep. they just get rid of that excess weight. Yeah. But humans do it because we've got a lot of serotonin inside our bowels, and our bowels, when we're stressed, the serotonin drops, which causes an evacuation of the bowels. Cool. Because serotonin regulates tone of the colon. Mm. It's, it's most abundant. Call my name. All right. So FAQs. Steve, I love the FAQs. Love We're getting a few through. In fact, that whole episode really was based on your FAQs. Yeah. So, um, okay. One of our listeners, uh, you know who you are. So, look, I believe you still get in contact with us if you hear you being read out um, either through the info yeah. or um, online and say, hey, look, you, you read out my question. Here's what my question was because we're, we're protecting people's anonymity, Steve. Yes. Um, but yes, so if this is your question, please get in contact with our team and we're going to send you out some a little gift, a little bit freebie. So thank you. Um, love listening to your podcast, super fascinating. I love learning and then implementing the newfound knowledge and the uh, real um, and real benefits. Love to know more about restoring gut health. Mm. Well, then you probably enjoyed listening to this podcast. Oh, yeah. Recently, I had to do three rounds of antibiotics for years, and my guts have been sensitive. Despite always consuming a whole foods, plant-based diet, I mainly eat fruits and vegetables. However, still struggling to maintain good gut micro um, and experience a lot of leaky gut symptoms. What can I do when I've tried all of the pre-probiotics and products foods for a healthy gut, yet I usually feel worse when taking probiotics than not. Yeah. Steve. If you've got leaky gut, you will. Um, yeah, there, there's uh, – I I, <laughs> can we mention uh, product names or not no. for this one? No. No. So what you need is, is is some sort of polyphenol rich supplement because polyphenols regulate the gut microbiome. They don't, they don't give you bugs that you may or may not need. So a lot of people react to – to probiotics because they take a probiotic, they don't need it, and they get too much of it. So you get a reaction to it. And you've got prebiotics, which are fibres, which which enable your bacteria to grow. Now, if you've got bad bacteria there because you, you've had loads of antibiotics, for example, you'll grow bad ones. You could. So you could have a reaction to that. So what you need is polyphenols, which are beneficial for regulating the, the, the gut microbiome. It's like a lawn and you mow a lawn it looks great after the lawn. That's what probiotics, uh, pro, that, that's what polyphenols do. They regulate the lawn. They kill the weeds and they mow the grass so everything's back to normal healthy balance and that's what you need, some polyphenols Perfect. to get your gut healthy. Yep, cool. Mm. All right. Um, yeah, so look, thanks for, for writing in for that one. Next one. Yep. Um, uh, another great podcast. This might be a tricky one. I'm not sure if you're able to provide info on it. Mm. Um, I have had a heavily coated tongue for many years, concentrated um, middle to all the way back down to where I cannot reach or scrape. Mm. Um, and it just comes back anyway. I've done several rounds of um, product, mm -hmm. <laughs> antimicrobials for weeks on end, which did not clear out uh, my gut of nasties, but the tongue has only ever fluctuated at the front, but hardly moves in the middle or the back. Mm. I quit sugar, mm. including fruit, Good. for months at a time, mm. the longest being 11 months. Wow. I eat low carbs 30 days every day, a carnivore celery, ju I lost, uh, celery juice diet. I lost all the things that I tried while re um, restricting I've lost, sorry, I've lost track of all the things that I've tried while restricting and at times eliminating gluten, dairy, additives while taking supplements to stay on top of my deficiencies. I have only ever 
uh, and it only ever fluctuates slightly if it changes at all. I have recently introduced things back into my diet, 90% whole food diet, but no longer restricting because I don't see the benefit of leaving out foods I enjoy so much, mm. such as fruit with no difference. I recently did a microbe test and it showed high amounts of firmicutes, bacteria, and strep. No clue of what to do now. Any help is much appreciated. Thank you. Steve, qualified person. Yes. So this sounds like a tricky one. It is a tricky one. And and actually, when 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 they were reading out what it was with the tongue, Katie, they go, oh, you don't know what to do. You've got to restrict carbohydrate diet. They've already done that. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. And then you think you get a bowel test. Yeah. And that's the, the step two. And they did that as well. And it showed what typically is the case, which is high firmicutes. Right. Now, the most common one that causes the firmicutes that cause this is candida albicans in the mouth. Now, that's oral thrush, and that's sort of the absolute most common cause of a real uh, nasty, thick coating. You've got to have some mucus there, but sure. you've got this, this thick coating there. One thing they, they didn't uh, mention there, I don't know if they do that, they could do it, but is exercise, intense exercise, because that regulates the gut microbiome as well, along with um, you know reducing carbohydrates in the diet. But the high levels of exercise should help with the candida albicans okay. and reduce the firmicutes in the gut. So the, the big one on that one, and again, I think we mentioned it in this podcast, is um, uh, the carbon mucus, yes. right? And, and, and that, that promotes acomansia. Is yes. that right, Steve? And that's the antagonist to the firmicutes. Right. So so that's that's what they did not mention in there. Um, also a very, very polyphenol-rich diet to get rid of all those excessive microbiome that you've got to mention in your it, it sounds like this person, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, yeah. was doing that, Steve. Yeah. Um, is there any w- – would would there be any other intervention for thrust, including – and again, um, I, I'm, I'm not advocating and I'm just asking yeah. the questions here. Yes. Um, antibiotics. Uh, well, they're, they're, probably candida is resistant to antibiotics. Is it? Unfortunately, most right. of them these days yep. are because they were treated through in the 80s, you know, with loads of antibiotics, oh. like Klebsiella. Yeah, right. It's now no longer the bacteria that's, that's sensitive to any antibiotics. So, uh, unfortunately, they probably don't work. So, you may need some some very powerful herbs that gets rid of some candida albicans. What's, what are they? So, poor diaco is, is the, the classic herb. Poor diaco. Yeah. Okay. Now, Never heard of that, Steve. Oh, it's, a, it's one that's not used as much anymore. It's, okay. Because candida was How huge. How do you spell poor diaco? Uh, P A. I'm kind of. Poor diaco. P apostrophe A U D. D, something like that. I can't remember. All right, we'll have a look at it. So that, because yeah. it's funny, I listen to podcasts and stuff sometimes, and they'll mention something, and I'll be like, "What did they say?" And yeah. how do you spell that? And I'll like, I can never get it because and, and I can never find the spelling the, for it. The other herb that'd be good <clears throat> in me is berberine containing herbs. Ah, I have heard of berberine, and I know that that is pretty powerful. Hydrastis so, canadensis, right? Don't know to spell that. No, hydrastis Gold, canadensis, yeah, yeah. golden seal. Yeah, yeah. Golden seal is the, the the common name for that one. So yep. I can spell you that one. Yeah, yeah. G O L D E N S E A L. Very very good herb for the gut. Right. Really good one for the gut. We used to use it also for mucus in in around the net mouth nets. That's very good for mucus on the tongue as well. Okay. It was used to be called the queen of mucus membranes. Okay. It's like a strange okay. sort of. It is. Thinks that's a really great herb to get into. So, so what would your advice be in in Everything, Steve, for this okay, person to do. fasting exercise. Fasting exercise. A very low carbohydrate diet. I know that that's helped them. I, but, and but I know that, that they've done that, yeah. but again, it may, maybe it's it's going to take a- It's going to be that plus everything. Things. Yeah. Right, yeah. So the exercise, the, the diet, the specific herbs. Yeah. Um, and um, those three things combined should really, really help them with the tongue. And then continue a high polyphenol-based diet. Very much so. Because it sounds like you might have done- and. and, and I don't know, Steve. Yeah. And again, oh, please. They've, 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 they've but done, it sounds like they've done one, two, yeah. which is great, but yeah. they need to do three, four as well. Yeah, knock out punch. You need it all together. Right. It, 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 it's like treating complex diseases. There's not just one thing for them. Right. They have to come at them from all angles. Uh, antibiotics won't help in this case. Right. Uh, because the, the candida that's usually causing that, that sort of mucus on the tongue is probably resistant to all antibiotics these days. Yeah. Oh, man. It, it had to happen. Yeah. It's like clips, yeah. Tough. Yeah. Very tough. Terrible. Well, and again, hopefully that helped. Please let our team uh, know if this was you, because um, we'd love to send you out some, uh, just a little thank you for sending in your question. Yes. Um, Steve, that's all that we've got time for today. Oh, we'll see you uh, all next Thanks week. for listening, everyone. We'll be back next week. <laughs>